Most of this, I believe, is wired. Look how crazy this is. This is just a madhouse. I'm gonna bundle it, make it look nice. This is the before picture. This is the explosion. No, I'm just kidding. Um, since everything, I think, works, I'm, I'm gonna do a, another test of the transponder to make sure that it is working because I, I didn't have my, um, my GPS source connected. But once that's done, I can, you know, check all that out. And um, I'm gonna make all this look nice under there with the with the wires, tie wrap all that off, and then clean it up in there too, and clean up my new EGT and CHT probes which are installed. So this is these are the new bundles that I did. And no grounds or anything like that. Just run the sending probes in. The, the, uh, the probes, the EGT probes, and then the CHT senders, and run them right into the, um, um, the gray wires, and then up to the front on the instruments. It's three sections. That's it. The EGT and CHT gauges worked. Uh, here's my stuff tie wrapped. Um, not, not the greatest. I've seen better jobs, but you know what? It, it gets it done. The one thing I don't like is these coming down and not coming down the tube here. Um, actually, I should probably tie wrap that. But other than that, um, I think everything's looking good. All right. Also now here, I'm taping up the uh, sharp edges for the fabric. Excuse me for the fabric work. So I'm pretty jazzed about that. Everywhere that the fabric will rub against, taping it with some duct tape. So I'm just starting to put together the materials here, and uh, I'm going to be doing a, um, this is a Glidden or PPG, uh, which is their premium um, gripper. It's an acrylic latex primer, and it's in white, and I just got this at Home Depot, and it was about, I think, like 25 bucks a gallon. I uh, got a couple gallons of that. I'm going to mix it, with, I'm going to reduce it down, uh, mix it with a 20% uh, water uh, for a, a certain viscosity. So. Um, special thanks to Malcolm over at, uh, at WienerDogArrow.com for uh, latex paint on uh, light sport aircraft and ultralights. So basically what I got here is I got six inch foam um, brush with uh, different types of sandpaper. I got 320 grit. You can use 220, 320 grit 
um, for the primer in between coats. And then once I get the, uh, the, the, the finish coat on there, which is actually going to be Sherwin-Williams um, enamel latex paint exterior interior latex uh, then um, I came in with a with a thousand grit and then a 1500 grit and eventually really fine 2000 grit um, and then from there you you can buff it to get that uh, that that shiny finish so um, let's see how it goes but basically if I use uh, four cups of uh, paint to one cup of water that should give me my 20 percent and then I'll check the viscosity like he recommends on the website <music> some painting today um, I uh, went to Sherwin-Williams and got some of the uh, uh, it's a called all surface enamel paint uh, right here it is and uh, I got some of that it's high gloss white I'm just painting the airplane white you know putting some stripes on them. so I've got a, a primer and a paint um, I did four and ended up doing four coats of uh, primer and then in between the coats three and four I sanded just did some dry sanding and 320 grit and then what I did was um, I did two coats of the paint and um, at this after the second coat it would have actually been better if I would have done some sanding in between the coats but after the second coat the final coat I did a wet sand at 320 so I got my bin here for uh, wet sanding and um, this it's hard to see right now I don't know if you can really see the shine but you actually see the reflection I think even in the camera but you gotta forgive this camera guys this is just uh, my cell phone uh, I don't I don't have a real um, uh, high definition camera by any means, but you can see the the garage door opener light right up here. You can see the reflection um, in this, and you can see a little bit of that reflection right there. So that's that's been wet sanded. That uh, elevator and on this the horizontal stabilizer has not yet been, but it has a pretty good reflection too. So the high gloss is coming through. It's pretty. It's kind of still dull. It's not like a real deep shine. But what I'll probably end up doing is um, I'm going to skip the buffing step. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that right now. I'll probably just put some clear coat on here um, and, and see how that goes. But uh, already, it's not bad. I really like it. It's not a, it's not bad by any means. I mean, I'd be happy with this on the airplane. So I might just stick with this. I'm not sure. Um, but what I do have is I have the 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 grit. So I will do a polishing sand on that and see if that kind of shines it up a little bit more. I should. <music> spray painted the push pull tubes like I was talking about and another thing is I got the sleeves on there so this is nothing new that you haven't seen before it's just riveting these uh, these over sleeves right here to extend the length of the rotor pedals to nose wheel steering push pull uh, connections so that's all that was just sprayed it with the with the uh, rust-oleum uh, appliance epoxy the white like you're doing a refrigerator and I just did one coat and uh, came out good so and these ones right here too are, are spray painted. So um, those are reinstalled. Um, these sleeves came with it and so nothing changed there. But it does look nice, right? It adds a, a nice look to it. Um, real quick here, another couple things. Uh, these things are all painted and they've been wet sanded. So uh, I think that's all I'm gonna do on them right now. Uh, I might come back and do, uh, you know, do uh, clear coat or something another day, but I, I just, I think it, they, they're fine. and. Uh, you know this one's this one's a little cloudy, but it's not too bad. You can see it still shines in the in the video. Again, it's not very super good resolution, but um, but I think it's going to be fine. These came out almost even better. So I installed the rotor, I tightened everything down, installed the cotter pins because this ain't coming off again. Uh, Lord willing, <laughs> this is on here. So that's what that is. And then uh, I'll put some once I paint the vertical stabilizer. I'll put in some of the, uh, I think it's 3M. You can do it a bunch of things, but it's basically your gap seals. So that keeps the airflow nice and smooth over the, over the rudder there. installed 
Um, so here it is right here with the handle. Um, I haven't riveted the top yet because of the uh, fabric work on the fuselage, but once that's done, um, I'll rivet that. And uh, I'll, I'll placard it as well, say an elevator trim. And if you move it forward, that's, uh, that's nose down, back is nose up trim. You know, that way is nose down, nose up. And then uh, it, there's a mounting plate for it right there that holds the, the cable in place. And then that cable is routed all the way back here. And there's a lot of extra feet of this cable. There's probably like two or three extra feet so I can actually, you know, zip tie it kind of back and forth on the underside of the fuselage to get rid of it. And then if I come under here, by the way, here's the finished, uh, finished rudder surface, finished um, horizontal stabilizer. The wing is primed like I think I showed yesterday. Uh, cool thing is, is I have a new um, one of these from Tom that I messed up on by drilling too many holes and so I didn't feel safe about it and he sent me another one which is awesome. And here it is. Here's the uh, elevator trim. I think I got it in the neutral position and that actually works out great because the handle is almost in a perpendicular position or straight up and down. So uh, just a little clevis um, uh, head right there with a uh, with a jam nut and a small tiny little uh, cotter pin there that you can see uh, and then you've got another mounting bracket right there and then that that just keeps the cable this is a pretty cool design I've never seen this before but it's got like a little indentation and that rests inside these two grooves so or there's one groove right in the middle here and that keeps it stationary and then I'll probably just like keep that wire going and then zip tie it off nice and neat so uh, but yeah that's the system. Um, it's a little tight just simply because of the way I did the hinge. So if I come back here and I actuate the system, it kind of, uh, the, the hinge is squeaky. So that's neutral position, a little bit aft, but that's okay. And, um, and then if I, I have to get up on this thing real quick here so you can see it, but as I move the cable, <laughs> you can hear it. Try not to move the camera too much here. So that would be, what would that be? Nose up trim. So put pressure on the elevator going upward to give you some pressure there. And then as I move it, move the handle forward, you can see it goes forward. It's all about, it's all about there. And that would be your nose down. Good stuff. So it's a little tight. But it works. It's not. It's not doing anything it shouldn't do. Just it might be nice if it was a little looser. But that's okay. I, I kind of like it tight because, you know, wherever you put it, it's gonna stay. Mm -hmm.